Okay, folks, you see the thumbnail, so you know what we're doing. Today, we're going to make a Southern-style stewed chicken, and we're serving it on top of rice. Let's get it. Okay, so we're going to get right into it, right? So the reason I have diced onions right now, only reason why is every now and then I get a hair up me, and what I do is I just go ahead and, uh, you know, cut them. I'll dice them all down, and I just save them for the recipe, seeing how I'm cooking every day. All right, so it's a little bit of prep work. As you guys can see, I've already measured out all of my dry ingredients, right? So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting down my, my celery, right? You just want to cut this down. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to go ahead and dice these down a little bit on the small side. And don't forget, when you dice them down small, that's for the, you know, flavor. And then when you dice them down and they're a little bit bigger, that's all about the texture. Now I want to practice what I preach, right? These are like true pro tips, right? So listen, I got a green bell pepper right here. I can cut this down, but I don't need the whole thing. I'm going to use about half, right? So I've been telling you guys, if you guys save your, uh, you know, like the end and the top, if you cut them the way I do, and then I didn't use everything. Look, I got a sliver here. Then I got some here I can just cut down. I'm going to go ahead and use what I had in the refrigerator and save my bell pepper for my next recipe, right? So seeing we need about a half, I'm going to say I'm going to use green and red and everything in this bag, and that's going to do the you know, same thing. that would be about half a bell pepper. This is what I got after I diced everything down and diced a little bit more on the smaller side. Look at that. That came out of that Ziploc. I got my celery here, and I got my onions, right? I'm going to set my onions back this way because now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take my chicken parts. Now, you guys can buy a whole chicken, which would be super cheap, than to buy in different, you know, like drums, you can do breasts. I like to do all of the parts in here when I do stewed chicken, right? So this makes it easy for me. So now that I got drums, I got thighs in here. Now look, all of my ingredients that I had that were dry, we're just gonna add these on top of here, right? You guys are gonna appreciate this because it becomes more like a little dump and go, right? So then we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's on all. Now what you guys are seeing right now is me seasoning. This is how I come up with like good food, folks. You gotta have the seasoning. Now, let me just say this. If I mince my garlic and put this on here because I'm gonna brown my chicken, and when I do that, you know what I mean? When you put that and you start browning, you got the garlic on there, it kind of like burns, make these little dark knots or whatever. So I'm gonna show you. I just want you to save this. I like to mince mine. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Now I'm getting ready to get in here with my hand and make sure I tumble all of these together and we get seasoning on it all. All right, so let me show you this piece right here. Normally I trim, but because we're gonna do stew, this right here is gonna be our flavor. This skin is gonna melt down and do, do its thing. And along with, you know, the seasoning, it just, it's a great marriage, right? So you wanna have all of that. And the fact that when you have skin, you know what I mean? You can pull it back. You know what I mean? You can put some seasoning just everywhere. But all of this is going to play a part at the end. And when you say stewed chicken, I'm sure everybody come running to the table. I ain't going to lie. If they don't, I will. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, you know, get a fire underneath here. We need to get this Dutch oven. Now, you guys can use Dutch oven. You can go ahead and uh, use, I say use Dutch oven because, listen, we want to stew it. So we want to have enough on the edge, unless you got one of them deep, you know, skillets, cast iron skillets, right? So I start with like a medium flame just to get everything nice and hot, right? Here, I got my, uh, this is scallion infused. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this in here because we want this to get nice and hot. You don't need no whole lot because once it starts getting hot, the chicken gonna render its own fat anyway. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but we didn't reach that smoking point, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken in. Listen, I want you guys to take, take a look at this, and I want you to listen too. Listen to that right here. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to notice I'm putting it in skin side down. Center everything up on the, uh, on the fire, right? And now we just let that work. Now remember, another pro tip is, I don't pick it up to keep looking at the bottom or nothing like that. Once it's fully cooked, it just releases itself. So all of the meat, just like steak, it has a self timer in the inside. Listen, when it's ready to be moved, I can just like tap it a couple of times and it should just slide. Then I start looking at it and see, do I have the color that I'm trying to achieve? Pro tip number three, folks. Okay, so look, you know, we got everything, you know, prepped and ready to go, except for our potatoes, right? Now I got three small russet potatoes right here. I might add a fourth one, 
it really depends on once I look at all of the meat and I figure out do I have enough and how much potatoes I want to have in the inside. Remember, these are going to be stewed. So listen, nothing like having that. Ooh, man, we got some nice dark meat. It's going to be nice, shreddable. We're going to serve it over some rice. And why not have some, uh, you know, some potatoes, right? Oh, and then I'm, I don't know why I'm talking like that. Don't forget, we got gravy, folks. Okay, if I touch them like that, see how they slide now? They no longer sticking. So I'm going to take these and put these down like that. Look at that skin. Uh-huh. Some of y'all are going to probably tell me, like, A.B., I don't really like my skin on there. If you don't, take it off. You know what I mean? Uh, you can do, you have these any kind of way you like them. You know what I mean? But I like that color right there. I like that little bit of crispness that it's giving right now. But once we get this submerged and everything and it starts to stew, it's going to soften up and that's going to be our flavor, folks. So when I touch them here, yeah, they're good. Let's look at the back of them. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. We just go ahead and stage those in a little bowl. Right. Now I'm gonna continue to do the rest. Now that we're taking the chicken out, you know what I mean? I got it brown. I got it just the way I like it. The seasoning is cooked the way I like it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start with my onions and my butter, right? Now, you got a lot of fine in the inside of your, uh, your Dutch oven. That's okay. Cause this right here, the ashes in this, and that moisture is gonna help pick anything up, right? But this is where we're gonna get that flavor. And don't forget, we're gonna render some gravy out of this too. All right, so pay attention to this part right now. If you look in there, you see that? Oh uh, yeah. Right, nice, hot, ready to go. Now I'm getting ready to come with my bell peppers and my celery. Now we start working that in. Look at the bottom of the Dutch oven. You see how it's picking up everything? This is what you want, folks. Now we're gonna saute these for about three or four minutes. Let's get these translucent. And then we're gonna add on top of this our garlic. All right, so right here is where I like to add just a pinch of salt. And I like to crack some fresh black pepper. Earlier I said, I mentioned to you guys about me putting the, putting my garlic on top. So you see I got a bed here. This way I don't have to risk putting it on top of the, you know, the hot porcelain. You know what I mean? Because when I do that, then it'll burn, right? So I just hit it, just like you see. Squeeze it. And don't forget, the full ingredient list for everything that you see here and is printable is on my website. That's smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Okay, now, everybody knows once that minced garlic touches that heat, you know what I mean, then it mixes with everything. Ooh, my goodness, the aromatic that comes off, right? So I keep it moving. Nothing burns, and now I'm going to come with my my flour so when you come in here look at this along with the butter the chicken fat and all of that look at how it absorbed everything right so you guys know what we do next chicken stock time all right so we'll start adding some of this to it right now this is what's going to give us that gravy you know that flour becomes a thickening agent right then as you stir it, you can see it just starts to turn that way anyway. You know what I mean? So we put about four cups in here. You know what I mean? Just see where we at. I keep the heat up, right? I like to keep stirring it, all right? So once I got it all incorporated in the inside, if it needs to have another one, you guys can go. That's why in the ingredient list, you'll see that I say four to five cups. You make it to the way you guys like it. But look at that right there. That's all of your flavor. And that's what you want right there. Okay, so let me give you guys an example. When you look in here, this is what four, four cups of broth look like. Look at the consistency. See, it's a little bit on the thick side. I like it like this, because listen, we finished stew, all right? So, put that there. Now I'm getting ready to start adding my chicken in. Y'all got it now. I ain't got to say nothing else to nobody here. You know what I mean? Ooh wee. Get some of them chopped them thighs in there. Now again, if you want it to be a little bit on the thin side, just make sure you take some of your, your chicken broth if you have some left. Like that's why I say four or five cups. That fifth cup is really up to you how you want to handle it, right? So take a look at this right here. Then I'm gonna make sure it's all covered. Come on, y'all. Get in there. 
Now, again, I know some of y'all going to be talking and y'all going to be saying, ah, oh, A.B., I don't like that skin. Take your skin off. Do it how you want to do it. But you see that right there? Mm, mm, mm. All I can tell you is I'm going to get me some uh, rice going and it's going down. All right, so if you come in here, look, I've already set my temp, you know, my fire down at the bottom because I want to have a simmer. That right there is what I'm talking about. See, like it crept up just a little bit because we don't want nothing to burn or stick on the bottom, right? Now, let's address the potatoes. I already cut these, put these in water so they don't brown. Now, I'm gonna simmer this for an hour, but the last 30 minutes, that's when I add my potatoes, you know, to this, and this is how we're gonna do it. But meanwhile, I'm gonna debate, do I want to get me some cornbread going and some uh, rice? But I know I'm gonna do the rice. It depends on how full I want to be. Put this top on. I'm gonna set a timer right now for 30 minutes and then we're gonna come back and add those to this. And then we're gonna go downhill to the last 30 minutes and be done. Now look, let's take a look at it after 30 minutes. You see that right there? I know some of y'all are already thinking about that, uh, about that rice, huh? Hey, even mashed potatoes work with this. You just see, listen, we're not looking for nothing thick. If you guys wanna make it like super, super thick, you can. But you see that right there? Now, for this last 30 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and just add these potatoes in, right? They fit to pick up some of that uh, some of that flavor, right? Oh my goodness. I ain't gotta say nothing else. But you see that? Wait till you see it again. I'm finna put that top on the top, back on, and then I'll see you guys for that the remainder of the last 30 minutes. So listen, this was the last 30 minutes on it. It probably went about 35 minutes, well, a total of about. Yeah, I'm gonna say an hour and five minutes, right? So I wanna show you this right here. If you come in here, look at that. I'll slide this over there to y'all. Look at that right there. That right there, my friend, is the way to go. That turned out great. Now, if I take this and I just do like this, you see, watch, if I just give it a little twist, it's nice and soft. Now, now is the time where your brain should be really like sending that signal. Look at this, it just break up nice and easy. You see what I mean? Just with a little bit of pull. All right, so let me set this off to the side. Let me take some pictures of it, and uh, we go from there. All right, folks. So when you take a look down this way, you see that? You guys can come on here and take a look and just see. Look at this right here. Man, it's just super... You know, more, it just breaks up. Look, I just stuck it in there. You know what I mean? Uh, this is what y'all care about, this right here. I know some of y'all say, A.B., you didn't make enough gravy. If you look here in this pot right here, that's enough gravy for everybody. Hey, listen, I'm not finna over talk it. Cheers, y'all. Hmm. Now listen, I ain't gotta say nothing. Your eyes, then sent a signal, and now you know. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below what would you have done to level up, you know, this uh, this gravy in here? Because everything else is already leveled up. I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna tell you what I would do. I would just probably quarter myself a, a large onion, make sure I break the layers up, and put that in there too, so it can cook down, and I can have that big, you know, big pieces of onion in there. But don't forget, we're gonna read your comments, and we're gonna answer some of them. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Hey, listen, I don't know what I want to do right now. One thing I am sure about, I want to sit down and eat. I'm out, folks. Peace.